if you're doing something that's your, that's your passion, there can be a lot of pleasure in that, right? So of course yeah. there can be overlap, right? If you're shagging flies all day and you're actually so good at it that you get paid to be a professional athlete, you could just be giggling about that all the time and that giggling can feel good and all that. A good way, and I'm not saying this is completely the only way we can think about this, but a good way to kind of tear them uh, or, or, or tease them apart and think about them differently is passions are closer to like, what are your interests, right? What am I passionate about? Like it's something external to me. And passions are generally kind of selfish. And we'll, this will get into the distinction with the meaningful life, right? Mm -hmm. They're and not selfish in a bad way, but they're selfish in that, like, it's just something I'm interested in. It doesn't necessarily have to be, it can be about someone else, like baseball, I could be on a team or whatever, but it's like, I just love playing baseball, or I just love accounting, or I love bowling, or I love crocheting, or whatever. Right, it is. Right, right. I've got a passion, an interest, um, you know, something about this kind of draws me to it, okay? And Pleasure, on the other hand, I think it'll be useful at least to make that more about like sensation, right? Mm -hmm. Pleasure is really about like, do you, can you like put your feet on the ground and enjoy a walk and connect with like the feeling of joy, you know, in your, in your chest, right? Can you, uh, you know, make a gratitude practice and start journaling every day, three things you're grateful for, but not just do the thinking about what you're grateful for, spend time getting into the pleasure of feeling the gratitude for your mom and the sunrise and something great that happened to you, right? Like, can you feel it? So that's upping your pleasurable thing. Again, go to all your senses, right? Can you taste things and be with them, right? Can you taste a strawberry and really let it just kind of be all over your mouth? And can you eat chocolate? And when you eat it, instead of like, uh, this is delicious, but I'm guilty about it and all that, can you go, whoa, 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 I'm eating it. So let me like really just be with it, right. really enjoy the chocolate, right? Like really right. take your time with it and, and let it do it. And again, I often turn it into when we're connecting with other people or someone we love and we're having sex or whatever, like, are you lost in, am I good at this? Do they like what I'm doing? Or I should be doing my taxes or like, are you lost in thought or are you present and are you smelling the smells and are you feeling the what feel? you like to redefine sensual right yeah yeah totally <laughs> which is well, literally being in the experience of what your senses it's are being right. in the experience of what your senses are and i happen to be talking about sexual sensation <laughs> now, <laughs> right, right, right. So normally i'm trying to tease those apart so we could talk about senses without <laughs> alluding to sexuality but in this one i'm i'm just saying that you know, we can have more pleasure like that, that ability, if you were to get better at being in your senses, uh, chances are, especially noticing your good senses, your pleasurable senses, that's going to up your ability to feel pleasure much more often. And ultimately be happy. <laughs> like totally. And lead great. to happiness. Enjoy but and so do passions, right? right so, right. so does the good life as yes. well. Thanks for tuning in to the Rob Scott Show. My name's Sarah, and I'm here with Rob Scott. He's a master level coach. And we're here to kind of, we got to start this again. <laughs> Cut. <laughs>